tonight we're not talking about human lie detection. We are talking about attraction, and it is not physical attraction. Alas, that's a different meetup. Uh, we are talking about attracting customers, conversions, and sales. And my goal is to talk about how to integrate human behavior into technology. So if you're developing products, websites, apps, SaaS, thinking about the human behavior side of your tech. And hopefully I can give you three very quick tips, since I only have five minutes, and I promised it would be five minutes. Um, three tips on how you can think about integrating human behavior into your tech. So the first thing is a study that was done by the Pointer Institute. So the Pointer Inst Institute tracked people's eye behaviors and eye patterns as they observed technology. And I'm going to focus on what they did on web pages, because apps is a little bit different. Mobile apps are a little bit different. And what they found was, and this is an example of my website uh, to show you, that people's eyes, when they land on a web page, move in an F pattern. So they start in the upper left-hand corner, they move across the top of the page, and they, they move down to about halfway, th halfway down the uh, top fold, and then down again. Now this makes sense, this is how we read a book, but very specifically they found that this is the F pattern that they make. So, when you're building your pages, when you're building your software, to think about how people naturally observe what you're doing to tell them where you want them to go next or what you want them to read. So for example, when we redesigned our website, you can see we, across the top axis, we put our headline, and then exactly on that second F line, we put our, what we wanted them to do, which was to sign up to our newsletter. That was the action step that we wanted. And then we put our, our, uh, our writing further down. Second, so this leads me into the next area, which is priming for action. So priming is a schmancy term for getting someone to do what you want when you want it. And one of the things you can do is you can prime people to take the action you want with your software or with your products by using eye behavior. So one thing that humans naturally do, they can't help it, is they look at where other people look. So for example, when we're in a big room full of people, we typically look towards the alpha in the room. Usually when I'm watching people mingle, I can tell who has a crush on who or who the boss is because we typically like to look at where their eyes look. So you can actually use this in your products or on your pages by dictating where eye behavior or eye gaze goes. So here's an example. This is uh, Ramit Sethi's website. He has the website, I Will Teach You To Be Rich. He does all kinds of really cool um, human behavior on his website. And as you can see, what he's done very cleverly is on the top half of his landing page, he has a picture of himself looking this way. Do you notice what he has in his eye path? He has his headline, and then he has all three of his conversion buttons that he wants you to do. Now, as humans, we start in the upper left, right, which we learned in the first slide, and then we directly follow his eye gaze over to the, over to the headline and then over to the action steps with the buttons. So he is subtly telling us what he wants us to do on his website. Here's the second way that people prime for action. It's with their hands. So the, second, the first place that we look on someone's body, I, I teach a lot of body language, the first thing we notice about someone is their hands. And the reason for this is because back in our caveman days, we liked to see where people, if people were carrying a weapon. It's how we kept ourselves safe. So we still do this when we see people. And so what you can do is you can actually use hands or pictures of people's hands to show them where you want them to go. So this is a, a website by Marie Forleo. She um, has an online business school called Rich, Happy, and Hot. And what she's done, really, what she's done <laughs> is she has used her hands and her eye gaze to tell you exactly what she wants you to do on her website. So when you get to her website, you can see she's pointing over to her headline. So this is all about the inside scoop. And then she's looking down where she wants you to read. So what you do is you look over to the headline and then you keep reading down. So she's cleverly primed you for exactly how she wants you to use her products. She also does this within her software. The third thing is using color. So there's a very deep science on color psychology. If you're doing front-end design, if you're thinking about what you want your buttons to be, uh, what you want your background to be, the psychology of color is incredibly important. So a recent study found that 90% of an assessment for trying out a product is made by color alone. But we rarely think about color in terms of human behavior. We just think about what looks pretty, or at least I used to. Right, I would think, oh, that color looks good with my branding. But actually, each and every color online, specifically, has its own unique meaning. So when you're, looking, when you're thinking about how you want to design your product, you want to make sure that you're doing it purposefully to know that you're getting the human behavior reaction that you want to your technology. And so my last step for you is to just think about what is the number one action you want people to take 
on your software, on your app, on your website, and think about how you're using human behavior to do it. Are you questions? Did I make it? Um, so eye gaze has been, so linguistic backgrounds meaning? Like, for example, people whose languages go from right to left. Oh, yes, it's, it's very different for those cultures. Okay. Yes, and it's also slightly different for apps. That's why I said this is specifically for landing pages and web pages. Our eye behavior changes on apps on smaller devices. Yeah. Yes, so um, it's, um, it's not an F pattern. Um, they start in the middle of the top, and they typically um, go back and forth more. So it's more like an S, a tighter S that goes down the page. That's a little bit simplifying it. It's not as pretty, so I didn't make that slide. Yeah? Do folks doing this have any ethical discussions about how far you can kind of, I mean, we're kind of machines. Yeah. What's ethical and what's not ethical? Yeah, so that is the fine line between persuasion and manipulation, yes. right? Um, unfortunately, people don't talk about it very much. Um, that's the sad thing. I wish people talked about it more. Um, I think that what they're saying is they want to optimize. So they're trying to optimize their product so that people use it in the best possible way. So people don't talk about it enough, but hopefully they're sticking on the persuasion side and not the manipulation side. Yeah. Yeah. Can you give us some color tips? Yeah. Yeah. So, let's, so here's um, a very brief example. I have all these for free up on my website. You're welcome to check them out. So um, yellow, for example, is yellow and orange are the highest energy colors. That's because wavelength-wise, they, they stimulate our appetite. A lot of fast food restaurants use yellow, orange, and red. There's a reason for that. Um, they stimulate our appetite. Um, the best way to think about it is if you want someone to um, take action as opposed to like read or watch, you want to use those high energy colors. If you want someone to stay and read and watch and experience, the cooler colors like blue and green are a little bit better. If you are trying to think of something on the fly, first, I'd always look at a, a guide. There's tons of them online. But second, you can also think about other brands that you like and you see what colors they're using. Every, they're using those colors extremely purposefully. Um, the most restful color on the eyes in tech is green. So I always set my desktop, my computer desktop background to like green trees. That is the most restful on the eyes. If you're thinking about um, not sh uh, charging color at someone, uh, green and white are the ones to use. Yellow and orange are out of the highest energy colors. Blue is the most trusting, loyal color. Um, people um, feel like very calm with that color. In fact, there's a study that was done at Creighton University that found that people make less typos in blue offices. So it's a, yeah, if you want people, if you're doing, if you're doing like programming language, blue is a good one. You don't want people to make typos. Yeah. So um, I have, uh, I've noticed people say, come to me and say, oh, I can't believe, did you see Amazon website? They took over it with ads on this side or that side or, or whatever the website is. And I'll yeah. always go, really? I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And apparently I, I have um, an advanced case of, uh, of quacking. The ducks are here. <laughs> I have an advanced case of banner blindness, which I've heard mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. going around. It, if we tell people about these things, does that mean that their effectiveness goes away, hopefully? Yes, if, you, if people become aware of them, there absolutely is that kind of purposeful blindness. And that is why Facebook is constantly reorganizing its pages. <laughs> it's because they want you to, to, all of a sudden you're looking over here for your favorite, whatever it is, you go to photos or updates. They'll move it because they just want you to, they want to avoid that blindness. They purposely re-update their landing pages and their um, frame every like two or three months because they want to avoid that blindness. That, that would I, that's I think more manipulation, not persuasion. Thank you so much. Thank you.